Dodge City and in the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the spell of gun smoke. <laughs> Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. p.m. We got in right on time, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, the railroad's getting better every month, Chester. Looks like they're going to civilize this prairie yet. Well, I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> All right, let's go. Well, Abilene sure don't change much. Looks about like it did the last time I was here. Yeah, we're getting most of the cattle at Dodge now. Boom's leveled off here. It's still a rough town, though, I suppose. You think he'll put up a fight? I don't know, Chester. He's pretty mean from all reports. He may. We'll try to avoid it, though. Of course, we're only guessing anyway. He he might not even be here. He always heads to Abilene when he gets in trouble. It's his hometown. He'll be here. Mm. One good thing, it's Bill Hickok's town, too. At least we'll have the local sheriff on our side for once. Yeah. I suppose that's some help. Some help? (laughs) I'd rather have Wild Bill along than anybody I know. I suppose. Chester, what's the matter with you? You're acting like a man at his own funeral. Uh, Mr. Dillon, I've had an uneasy feeling ever since we left Dodge. A kind of a hunch, you might say. Ah, oh, it's nonsense. They're going to pick up a killer and take him back for trial. That's all. Maybe. And maybe not. Look, Chester, any man who lives by a gun knows down inside that he's going to die by one someday. But if he's got any sense, he keeps from thinking about it. Of course, he can't help getting a hunch now and then. I had plenty of them myself. Mostly wrong. Come on, Chester, let's walk down to the last chance and I'll buy you a drink. As a matter of fact, I'll buy us both a drink. the same. A bottle of rye and a couple of glasses. Quite a crowd in here for this time of day. Yeah. I've been looking around for a while, Bill, but I don't see him. Suppose the Daggett kid might be in here, Mr. Dillon? Well, he spent most of his time hanging around the saloons while he was in Dodge. Here you are, boys. Drink up. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Oh, uh, by the way, bartender, do you happen to know a kid around town by the name of... Uh, who, mister? What? Oh, oh, never mind. Never mind. Well, he's here, Chester. Hmm? Down there at the end of the bar. Yeah. It's him, all right. Well, sir, Mr. Dillon? He's what we're here for. We gonna wait for Mr. Hickok? No. Come up on his left side, Chester, and watch his gun hand. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. I'm telling you, it was the funniest sight you ever seen. The bullet knocked that scrawny iron dog over and over him. First shot fired. Caught him right in the back of the... Uh, You're Jack Daggett, aren't you? That's right, mister. What about it? My name's Dillon, U.S. Marshal from Dodge. You're under arrest. You're kind of out of your territory, aren't you? 
Marshal's territory's anywhere. I'll take that gun of yours now. You will, huh? All right. Drop it. Drop the gun. Let go of my wrist. Drop the gun. Drop nothing. You heard the marshal. Oh! Uh, that was easy, Mr. Dillon. A lot easier than what I thought it'd be. All right, Chester, put the cuffs on it. Yes. Seems to me your partner acted a little high-handed there, Marshal. It does, huh? Now, he had no call to slug that boy in the head that way. Would you rather have put a bullet in his belly? Chester saved his life, that's all. He was drawing on me. Well, now, if you'd come around and seen me before you started anything, you wouldn't have had this trouble. My name is Rourke. I'm the town constable here. I see. Young Jack here told me all about that shooting out in Dodge. Said they ganged up on him in a poker game, tried to cheat him. Forced him to shoot his way out. That's a good story. It's too bad it didn't happen that way. All right, Chester, let's get him on his feet and go find the sheriff. I, uh, reckon you won't be finding him, Marshal. Why not? Hickok's up in Topeka. Won't be back for a week or ten days. Meantime, I'm the law in Abilene. And I got a favor to ask from you. I'd like to use one of your jail cells until 9 o'clock. That's when the next train leaves for Dodge. Mm, well, I'm sorry, Marshal. I got no authority to do anything like that. What difference does that make? If Wild Bill were here, he'd let me do it. But Wild Bill ain't here. I see. A lot of us folks here like to run our own town. We don't like outsiders coming in and taking over. It's four hours till that train leaves, Marshal. I think you're going to find four hours is a long time. Meaning? This uh, young fella you arrested has got a couple of older brothers. The Daggett boys. You probably never heard of them, but you're going to. They're not going to like this. I don't care much what they like. Maybe they'll teach you to care when they hear about this. And they'll hear. Like I said, four hours is a long time. Look, I want you to get this straight. I came here to arrest a killer and take him back to Dodge to stand trial. I got him under arrest now, and I'm going to take him back. Maybe. All right, Chester, let's get him out of here. Get hold of his other arm there. Lift him up. Yes, sir. Take him out if you want. Mr. Dillon? What is it, Chester? Maybe it was too easy. Yes, gentlemen. What can I do for you? We'd like to get a room, please. Well, I have a very nice one right at the head of the stairs. If you'd care to look at that it... That won't be necessary. We'll only need it for about four hours until the train leaves for Dodge. Mm-hmm. Well, if you'll just sign the register here. Thank you. My, your friend seems to have suffered quite an injury. Yes, sir. He bumped his head. Oh, really? Well, it's certainly a bad cut just to have had... Boy, that... That's one of the Daggett boys. Young Jack Daggett. Yeah. yeah, that's right. I got him under arrest for murder. Now, where's the room? You arrested Jack Daggett? Right here in Abilene? Yeah. You said the room was... Up... And, and you're planning to keep him here at my hotel for the next four hours? Well, I can't stand out there on the street with him. Oh, Marshal. Marshal, do you know what's going to happen when the Daggett boys hear about this? No, but I understand they may not like it very much. May not like it. I'm sorry, sir, but you cannot stay here. I will not let my hotel be made the scene of a bloody massacre. Now, just a minute, mister. Yeah, You've I, rented me a room. I've I, signed the register, and I've got the key. I, I, and I'm going to use that I... room until 9 o'clock, whether you like it or not. It's the second door at the top of the stairs. Thank you. Come on, Daggett. Move. You heard him, son. Come on. Keep your hands off. There's just one thing, sir. Yeah. 
It's, it's not a question of your honesty, you understand, but in view of the circumstances, I wonder if you'd mind uh, paying in advance. <laughs> What time is it, Chester? It's... It's 6.23, Mr. Dillon. Mm, I thought it was later than that. Yes, sir, I know. He goes pretty slow when you're waiting for something. Like this. I swear I wished it was 9 o'clock. I, I wished we were leaving on that train right now. You're not leaving on no train. Not alive. You got a one-track mind, Daggett. So have my brothers, Dylan. What they think about all the time is hands off the Daggetts. That goes for you or anybody else. Reckon we ought to stuff a pillow in his mouth, Mr. Dillon? <laughs> Might not be a bad idea. You won't think it's funny when they come around. But maybe they won't come around. Maybe they decided... Cover the door from the other side, Chester. Yes, sir. Yeah, who is it? It's me, sir. The clerk. What do you want? It's the Daggett boys. They're across the street at the last chance right now. And you're hoping I'll go over there instead of waiting for them to come here, huh? Well, I... I... All right. I'd rather jump them than have it the other way around. Chester, I guess we'll go over and have a talk with him. What about him? Well, he's cuffed hand and foot to a pretty solid iron bed. I don't think he's going anywhere. I'll bet on it. You ready, Chester? I'm ready whenever you are, Mr. Dillon. All right, let's go. <laughs> Return for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, this Monday night and most of these same stations, be sure to be with us when Lux Radio Theater raises the curtain on its full hour adaptation of the exciting screenplay Phone Call from a Stranger. Shelley Winters and Gary Merrill recreate their original screen roles in this dramatic thriller about the experiences of a lone survivor of an airplane crash and bringing the tragic news to families of the victims. Remember, it's on Lux Radio Theater this Monday night on CBS Radio. Now for the second act of Gunsmoke. That must be them, Mr. Dillon. Across the room there. Yeah, I guess so. And they look a lot like Jack. And they look mad. And there's quite a crowd around them. Well, Chester, the only way to get it over is to get it started. Yes, sir. Uh, how will we do it, Mr. Dillon? I haven't got a plan, Chester. Face them down, that's all. Yes, sir. You the Daggett brothers? What if we are? This is him, Jim. This is a fellow. Shut was up, talking. Rourke. You've been glad enough to stay out of this so far. Stay out of it now. My name's Dillon, United States Marshal from Dodge City. I got your brother Jack under arrest for murder. You probably heard about it. Yeah, rumors got around. I'm taking him out of here on the 9 o'clock train. He's going back to Dodge to stand trial. My guess is he's going to hang. Yeah. Now, the point is, what are you going to do about it? Why didn't you wait? We'd have looked you up. <laughs> you didn't answer my question. 
Still two hours and a half till nine o'clock. I reckon we've got plenty of time yet. We'll wait. Why wait? What's the matter with now? Would rather wait. Maybe you're trying to pick up some helpers among this bunch of hangers-on, huh? Well, look at them. Each one to trying to sneak behind the man next to him. If you're counting on any help there, you better forget it. You're pushing your luck, Dylan. I don't think so. You boys are full of talk, and that's all. You never even intended to start anything. You're a dirty liar. We're going to do Hold plenty. It. Now, don't you move, either one of you. You covering my back, Chester? Yes, sir. All right. I'll take that gun. Thank you. Yours, too. Sure. It's your play, Dylan. Where it stands now. Thank you. Here, Chester. Kick those back under the tables. Yes, sir. All right, folks, just leave them lay, please. Don't nobody touch them. Here, Chester. Now hold on to my gun. All right, Mr. Dillon. Now just keep them off my back. Yes, sir. You. Come here. Sure. You called me a liar, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Boy, you cheap chin horn. You are guilty. I thought you daggers were tough. Hey, watch this, watch this, watch. All right, you. You're next. I'll wait, Marshal. I'll get to you later. You're a no-good coward, Daggett. All right, Chester, I'll take my gun back now. Here you are, sir. Thank you. All right, boys, the show's over. Unless, of course, one of you'd like to take up where the Daggett's left off. Any one of you still figuring on helping them try to take my prisoner away from me? No? I didn't think so. You're all fine, upright citizens now, huh? A pride and joy to Constable Rourke here. That's enough, Dylan. I thought I told you boys the show was over. All right, get out. Go on, get out, all of you. Move! All right, let's get out of here. Marshal, I'd say you overreached yourself there. Step past the limits of your authority. How I enforce the law is my own business. I do things my own way. The way it'll get you killed someday. Maybe. I have to live in this town, Dylan. You don't know these Daggett brothers. If you cross them, you're through. I've seen it happen. Come on, Chester, let's go. All right, Mr. Dillon. What time is it, Chester? It's... It's 7.45, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, the time's dragging. Yes, sir. It's still an hour and 15 minutes till that train leaves. What difference does it make? You're not going to be on it. Neither one of you are. The way I'm figuring, Jack, we'll all three be on it. You wait and see. You'll never get to that train. My brothers will take care of you. They don't seem to be in any hurry about it. You wait. I sure do wish I hadn't had such an uneasy hunch about this trip. <laughs> Forget it, Chester. They'll stop you. You just wait. Well, 
It's only 8.15. Mr. Dillon seems to be going slower all the time. Yeah, it's up, though. Won't be much longer now. 45 minutes. If the train's on time. And if we're lucky enough to get on it. Chester, you're wearing yourself out. Why don't you sit down and relax, huh? I just can't seem to set my mind to it, Mr. Dillon. No daggett will ever leave this town wearing handcuffs as long as the other two are alive. Well, I'd think that's up to them, Jack. Sure. And they'll take care of it, too. I, I swear and declare, Mr. Dillon, I almost wish they would try something and get it over with. <laughs> the waiting's always the worst part, Chester. You find out what the worst part is. I could slug him, Mr. Dillon. No, let him talk. Let him talk, Chester. He's only got a few more weeks to do it in. <laughs> They'll never hang me. I'll never even stand trial. You wait and see. Chester? It's half past eight exactly, Mr. Dillon. All right. Let's get started. A little early, isn't it? Won't take that long to walk from here to the station. It might if we have trouble. Yes, sir, I guess it might. You'll have trouble. Don't you worry about that. Jack, why don't you get on a new subject? How are we going to take him, Mr. Dillon? Just drag him? If he wants it that way. Otherwise, he'll walk handcuffed to my left wrist. Keep him covered, Chester. I'll unlock these cuffs and get him loose from the bed. Yes, sir. Dylan, if you're smart, you leave me here and run while you still got the chance. Well, I've never been smart enough to run yet. Stay got your right wrist. All right. On your feet. Come on. You can put your gun away, Chester. Starting now, he's only going where I go. Now, come on, Jack. We got a train to catch. Thank heaven, gentlemen, you're leaving. Yeah, we're leaving. And I want to thank you for your wonderful hospitality. I'll be glad to recommend your hotel to anybody who plans to stop over in Abilene. Oh... I uh, hardly know what to say, Marshal. You simply don't understand. You don't know these Daggett brothers. Uh, no, no, no offense personally, Jack. I have to live in this town, and I... Come on, Jack. Uh, I... Uh... Now, you boys must run quite a bluff. You got everybody in town jumping sideways. You'd be smart if you did, Dylan. Good luck, gentlemen. Uh, best of luck to... To all of you. <laughs> all of us. Well, that's hedging his bet. Look there, Mr. Dillon. Not a soul on the street. Quiet as a graveyard. Yeah. Now they're going to make a play, Chester, somewhere between here and the depot. We can count on that. Yes, sir. I kind of figured they would. Especially after getting beat up over there at the saloon. Oh, they would have anyway. And jumping them like that did one good thing. It scared the pack off. At least we only have to worry about the Daggetts, not a mob. You'll think it's a mob shut by up. the time... Now, from here on, you keep your mouth shut. If you don't, so help me, I'll slug you and drag you to the depot. All right, now, let's go. That's not a soul. I never thought I'd see the main street of Abilene deserted at this time of night. It's not deserted, Chester. They're inside behind the shutters. But at least they're staying out of it. I wonder if coyotes are as lonesome as they sound, Mr. Dillon. <laughs> they couldn't be, Chester. Watch that left side up ahead of us, sir. It's pretty dark along there. Yes, sir. They might jump us from behind. I don't think so. Too many people watching. They gotta keep up their reputation. I hope you're right. Chester, mm -hmm. there at the corner of the bank, somebody moved. Across the street, too. 
in the shed. Take the one in the shot at Chester. Yes, sir. There's one down, Chester. The other one's still there in the shadows. Get him if you can. Jack, here's ruining my aim. I'll ruin more. Hey. All right. Jack. Good for you, Mr. Dillon. You ought to slugged him sooner. I didn't slug him, Chester. He caught a bullet that was meant for me. Well, shot by one of his own brothers. Here, let me unlock those handcuffs, Mr. Dillon. No, get... no time. Here, I'll get him up on my shoulder and... All right, let's move in and keep firing. Yes, sir. Hold it, Chester. Well, I guess we got the other one. Here, let me get him off my shoulder. Get these handcuffs off. Well, there's our prisoner, Jack Daggett. Wanted for murder, killed by his own brother. Let's take a look at the others. Uh, three men dead. Look down the street there, Mr. Dillon. They're all starting to crawl out of their holes. Sure. They're all on our side now. Oh, come on, Chester. The train's coming. we got to get on it and get out of here. Yes, sir. Let Rourke clean up this mess. He ought to be good for something. Hmm. That sounds more lonesome than the coyotes. Gives a man the creeps. Yes, sir, it sure does. Well, you were wrong about that hunch of yours, Chester. It wasn't us. Not this time. Smoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Sam Edwards and Barney Phillips, with John Daner, Tom Tully, Larry Dobkin, and Jim Nusser. Harley Bear is Chester. Gunsmoke is heard by our troops overseas through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke.